need yeah. all this stuff. Right. All this stuff. Okay. Just have a flag, just have a flag. Okay. Okay. Right, do you want to do the question? Or are you recording, Andre? We grieved the life that our daughters would have. Every time we leave the house, we need to plan ahead for every eventuality. Where are we going to? How long are we going to be out of the house? What do I need to bring with me? PKU has taken over our lives. It impacts everything that we do every day, every meal that my daughters eat, every single thing that they put in their mouth. This single slice of bread has five grams of protein in it. Two slices of this bread wouldn't be safe for my daughters to eat. My name is Anne-Marie and I am a mum to identical twin girls called Georgie and Emmy. Georgie and Emmy are three and they have the rare condition called PKU. PKU basically means that my daughters cannot metabolise protein. When the body can't metabolise something, it builds up in your bloodstream and causes irreversible brain damage. Every single meal that my daughters have, every single thing that they put in their mouth needs to be tracked and monitored. The only thing that they can eat freely is fruit and most vegetables actually have to be weighed. When we go out to a restaurant, the only thing that they can eat is chips and even chips need to be weighed. It's really important that we tell our story so that people can truly understand what it's like to live with a rare condition. It is only by telling our stories, explaining what it's like to live on a day-to-day -day basis, either caring for or with a rare condition, that I think people truly understand. Generally, not much is known about rare conditions, not as much research is done as there is with other more common conditions. One of the most challenging things is uh, Georgie and Amy have a big sister called Matilda who is five and doesn't have PKU. Matilda can eat normal foods and the twins just want what she can eat. If I give a Pettifalu yogurt to Matilda, the twins just want one and I can't give it to them because it's not safe for them to eat. Because Georgie and Emmy's diet is so restrictive, they must drink a supplement every day to keep them healthy. The body needs protein to grow and be healthy, so they get the nutrients that they need from a formula that's been made in a lab. The only way I could describe that formula is that it's unpalatable. I'll never forget the first day that I made the little paste for Georgie and Emmy. They drink a formula now as a three-year-old. As a six-month-old, I had to prepare a paste with powder and water. And I felt that the first time I give them that paste, I should taste it myself. That taste will stay with me forever. It was the most revolting thing I've ever tasted. My husband and I cried that day because not only did we have to give that paste to our girls today, but every day for the rest of their lives. I still find it very hard to talk about that day. We had just come through an extremely high risk twin pregnancy, which was a very stressful time for us. The girls had just been born, we'd breathed a collective sigh of relief that they were here and that they were healthy. And then we received a phone call when they were eight days old. We had to come to the, back to the hospital urgently. They had been diagnosed with a rare condition, the rare condition PKU. We'd never heard of PKU before. We didn't know anything about it. We just panicked. It was de devastating that her daughters had been diagnosed with an incurable, lifelong condition. Sorry. And it was my husband and I had passed it on to them. 
Receiving the news of the girl's diagnosis would have been difficult at any time of year, but our girls were born two weeks before Christmas. As you know, Christmas is a time of great celebration and it's all based around food. And we had just got the news that every Christmas would be different from then on for our daughters. We spent that Christmas feeling guilty and very sad about all of the things that they would miss out on. After my daughter's diagnosis, I realised that there was a drug available that would help to manage their condition. It, it basically helps to metabolise protein and therefore reduces the risk of brain damage. This drug has been used all over the world for 13 years now, but it's not available on our local health service. I have been campaigning for two and a half years now, almost my daughter's entire lives and I won't rest until they and everyone in the PKU community have had the chance to trial this drug. I get so frustrated at how long everything takes. Decision makers need to work with more urgency. My greatest hope for my daughters on the short term is that they can trial the life-changing drug that I have been campaigning for. That would give me so much hope. There's lots of treatments for PKU. I just hope that my daughters will be able to try those someday. And of course, my ultimate hope is that there will be a cure for PKU someday. To be honest, I live in the day to day. I think about how I'm going to keep my girls safe and protect them today. If I got too hung up in the future, it would overwhelm me. Who knows what the future holds? There could be other treatments that could help their condition. But as they get older, I won't be able to be with them all the time when they start school, because at the moment I am their main line of defence against brain damage. My life lesson is that you can go from a devastating diagnosis to having great hope and strength to never give up because I have two little three-year-old girls who are happy, healthy, fun-loving, energetic, normal little girls.